club head is swinging its center of mass on top of the plane. And then in this transition piece, it needs to go under the plane. That's how it's designed. We'll talk about why it needs to be here as well, especially as we start talking about the body system. But it's on top, under in transition, and then as TJ turns, it's gonna go woof, out, out, and go back out through the golf ball all, all the way up into the finish. We're already getting some like really awesome questions, but kind of deep dive questions on our YouTube, on our Instagram, TikTok, like everywhere where they're, we're just throwing information. And before like answering questions on those particular like nuts and bolts and zooming in on those, let's take a look at the whole car first, like mm -hmm. global perspective on golf swing and just a general shape that you can see. Start with this and then we can probably get some great questions from this video. Let's go. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> um, three parts to the golf swing, okay. in my opinion. And I'd love to get your take on this because we haven't even talked about this, like the topics of this video. I'm just going to throw some okay, stuff cool. at I'm you excited. and we're let's just going to kind of go. So three different parts of the golf swing. There's the club system, okay. like how the golf club is designed. Luke Got Bracky it. would talk about geometry, like where in space this, this thing is swinging. Okay. There's the hands and arm system. By the way, when we talk about hands, it's from the fingertips to the elbow. Okay. And then from the elbow up into where the humerus sits in the shoulder socket. So that's the whole arm and hand system. Got it. Okay. And then there's the body system. I think what most folks have a difficult time with is like, where do I start? What's a good start point? In my opinion, for players that are like intermediate to beginner, maybe even some kind of touching into advanced, looking at the golf club first and how it's designed is like huge. Because a lot of people don't even really know that, right? Yeah, because there's all this just crap. It's just crap. Keep your left arm straight. Keep your left, keep your head down. Even for us, upper spirals, mm -hmm. drop, keep the club behind you. If I'm new to the game, I'm like, what in the hell is all this stuff, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. I don't know how the go golf club is designed. Mm -hmm. let, let's start with that. Just the design, and you see all kinds of like everything out there when you look at, at golf swings on tour, but if we have like, you hear about the plane oftentimes, right? And Hogan has this awesome picture in one of his books. It's this like glass sheet that goes right through him, like right through here and goes right through the golf ball. So this would generally be speaking the plane of the golf swing. The golf club is designed in its simplest form to swing on top of the plane. So it'd be in this space here. This is under the plane. On the backswing or in the backswing, it swings on top of the plane. So let's see that. So it swings up in here. So you'll see this space, like the club, generally speaking, is a bit outside the hands. The club head is swinging its center of mass on top of the plane. And then in this transition piece, it needs to go under the plane. That's how it's designed. We'll talk about why it needs to be here as well, especially as we start talking about the body system. But it's on top under in transition and then as tj turns it's going to go woof, out out and go back out through the golf ball all, all the way up into the finish okay so like you could think of like the club system it has three pieces to it or three dynamic phases as well it's okay. on top under out there just it is three phases in your mind right yep exactly when we're just again we're just looking at like the club system right now we're not talking at all about the hands the arms the body the chest the nothing got it it's just how the golf club is designed okay on top under out got it okay so if you hit a ball like that and just play around with this show us just kind of a general neutral one because you have a beautiful golf swing but in essence the club's on top it goes under it goes out excellent okay now this is what's fun. There's no perfect golf swing. No. Get crazy with it. Oh, you want me to go like? Well, that was a neutral one, which is what I All asked, right? right? So now if I put a sensor right here on this club head, yeah. let's see it go a little bit more on top, under, out. And you can just play around with this. And again, you still need the out. Even if it gets crazy under, it still needs to get out. Okay. On top, way under, out. And so what's pretty cool is like that looked a little different than the first one. Yeah. You freaking smushed both of them. True. Right? Yeah. So this it's, within is that, it's within that system that you're talking about. Exactly. So, and I, I actually like some of your posts too. Actually like, that sounds like I don't like some of them. <laughs> That's funny. I like all of yours, but okay. one of them that I really like is, especially lately on, on the gram, you're showing this like 
the body action is like an improper swim, like this is an over swim. Let's see a system where the club, yes, yeah, where the club goes under, over. Okay. Okay, and we'll see if it can even go out. And get crazy with this one, like it's way under, it's so way under, over. Under, over. Yep, and then you just hit from there, yep. Just cruise under, over. So, I mean, th there have been swings that have produced major championships with that pattern. Mm -hmm. However, like Ray Floyd is one of them. Um, however, there's, there's this like over, but there's a correction. Like they'll yeah. correct it at some point well, in delivery. Well, because you can't, you can't keep turning from here, right? Yep, exactly. Like, the club's not going to find the ball, <clears throat> so the correction happens there. For good players. For good players. Yeah. Okay. For, a, for a novice, it would be going over, and they just keep on going over, and that's where they hit this, like, low pull or, like, this white floater. It just mm -hmm. isn't quite correct. Got it. Because it's how the golf club and this are designed to interact with one another. There's a very efficient way, and then there's more complexities on top of that. Right. So the more complex, it could be like really haywire after a while. That's why you don't see many golf swings that go under the plane early on the PGA or LPGA tour. No. You just don't see it. You'll they, see, they do exist, but it's, it's, it's a minority. You got to hunt for them. Yeah. <clears throat> right? Agreed. Yep. So <clears throat> you'll, see, you'll see golf swings that are on plane the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I think an on plane swing, there was a comment on one of our posts too that this was kind of cool. On plane swings are kind of difficult like... The one plane swing is kind of tough because in essence, you have to more or less keep it on there. You don't have a whole lot of wiggle room because if it's on plane and it wants to bump over the plane, mm -hmm. it's going against the simplicity of the golf club design. Right. So it would be easier to go like, well, let me get it over, behind and out. Yeah. Cause but I've seen wiggle that, room. I've seen that exaggerated by even some players that still play really well. But yep. because it's in this system, like it seems like it's almost easy from that point. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it's because what, what you're creating, now we're kind of tying in the body system as well here a little bit, but once you go up, so show that like crazy one okay. to delivery, like crazy it's one up, to delivery. under and freeze. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. So right now the shaft, generally speaking, is somewhat perpendicular, like exactly perpendicular, it might be like right there. This shaft is almost perpendicular to your T-spine right here. Okay. So if you just turned your T-spine, and they, again, this is designed to go out, you're going to create what's called angular force. So it's like free, easy energy based on chest rotation, and it keeps the club on its plane as it works out and through this like hit phase. Mm -hmm. So it's like this really simple, like through the strike area. And that's when, when we work with, with certain students, we're waiting, like based on the information we're giving them, like we're always going, how did that feel? How did that feel? How did that feel? And we're waiting for like the, oh my gosh, that felt amazing. Right. And they're saying it felt amazing, not because of like how pretty the backswing was no. or how great they got into honey hole or anything. It's, it's from- Because of how it felt here, right? Yeah. yeah. They're like, ooh, that felt right. They right. feel the compression. It's easy. They didn't work that hard. The golf club just zooms. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Yeah. Right. So that's why we like that. I think that's a really good place to start with, especially for folks that are just starting to like understand, get this baseline understanding of the golf swing. Mm -hmm. Let's start distal, how the golf club is operating in space and how it's designed in its simplest form. Start with that. And then we can kind of like play with some stuff from there. Okay. Got it. Cool. Yeah. For guys that are more accomplished, um, what we're looking for is we might start because they have a good understanding of like what the golf club's supposed to do, like in this oper like operating it through the strike. Mm -hmm. They know when it feels good. They know when it feels cruddy. They're still able to kind of get the golf club on the golf ball. But the reason that it feels good at times is because the body system proximal, mm -hmm. not distal, proximal is supporting the swinging of the arms and the club. Okay. So when we're looking at like the body system, I think a really good place to start, Tej, go ahead and set up again, would be the, the radius or the distance from the, the sternum, which is that plate right in between like the rib system, pretty close to the heart, and the distance it, it is away from the golf ball. Okay. Okay. So generally speaking we want this energy out out through the arms through the hands through the club through the strike okay so i better keep that away if i'm going to feel the energy go out 
Got it. So if that club's getting a little bit further away from me, I uh -huh. had better not be getting that sternum closer. Yes. I'm going to have a lot of problems there, right? Yeah, you can't get to it. So like, sh do that again. Show right where you were. What would you have to do with the arms and the club to get it onto the golf ball? Well, yeah, so now you just did that with your body, so that's an extension sure. pattern, which is what we see, again, a lot go. of players do. Yep, or just suck them up into you, right? Yep, seen that. Which seen feels that horrible. <laughs> that hits like, that doesn't that's the word. It just feels horrible, right? All of those, what you just showed, feel horrible. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> they just do. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason, like, instead of me just saying that they feel horrible, the reason that they feel horrible is we start with this general, like, if I have any sense of grip in the golf club, club, hands, arm system, I, I've, I've, I've created a structure here. And like any kind of hitting pattern, if I were going to hit you, don't worry, I won't. If I'm going to hit you hard, I'm going to keep and maintain that structure. Mm -hmm. So from right here, I just pretty much abducted this left arm and adducted the right arm. So if I wanted to put pressure on you, I could put a ton of pressure on you there. Got it. As soon as I go into extension, I lose that ability to just turn that abduct and adduct. And now this whole structure gets whacked out. Huh. So I lose control of like what's going on down here. So, so when you hit one of those shots mm. that feels like really compressed, for instance, right? Yep. That's when it feels like you're almost like connected. Like the, the arms feel like they're connected to the, to the rib cage, right? In a way, yeah. And, and there's a lot of ways, like that's a super interesting way to say that because okay. we hear that a lot. But again, this word connected is like, how do I, what is connected to me? How do you define it? Okay, yep. understood. Connected, I think what you're, you're saying again is that the structure of the arms, like from right here, if I did this, right, I could take the arms and this is like from right here, I could go abduction, which is that action. This is adduction, boom. And I didn't change the shape of my arms, hands and club. That might unload a little bit, That's, but bang. Yep, okay, got it. Right, so I feel like, ooh, this is nice and solid. Like this is connected or structurally sound, like however you wanna say it. Yeah. It feels good. And the reason it feels good is it feels like you have control over this. Yes. Right. You have like some leverage over the golf clubs. Still. Exactly. Got and it. good players are probably going to feel that with their hands. Okay. And we feel that feels bad because now I lose control of what the face is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's because I'll probably be going into extension either in my spine, my pelvis, all of it. And now I can't turn anymore. Mm. And that's typically because of a space issue. I've got to create space late so the arms can go ahead and shoot. Ah, so that's where that comes in. So if there I'm getting go. this thing close, yep. then I'm eventually going to have to stand up, extend, and add this throw action. Exactly. Or you could turn it away. So go back to where you were. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So go into that delivery where you feel like you get close again. Good. Now, if you took this whole lead shoulder and sternum and felt like it's turning on a curve on this angle that way like up back and away from you okay just set this behind the golf ball well you there you got all the room in the world to get that back down there that's why we like chest rotation because ah. it curves the sternum away and it gives you the space needed here for the arms and the golf club to shoot their energy out got it so as the sternum's now moving up and away Yep. Now the golf club has permission to go ahead and shoot out. Exactly, it can shoot out on its curve. What ah. creates the curve? That. Chest rotation. Dang, all right. So you'll feel out with the arms and club. Right. <clears throat> out. Well, that's not a curve, but it will curve. If you're turning. If you're turning. But if you finish it here. There you go. That's why we see the golf club, like the, the face will turn over and the, and the unload will be up yep. because you're just extension, whether it's in the hips or in the spine or all of it, and you mm -hmm. lose all that. So you lose bottom out, you lose face stability, you lose everything, and now you can't control the golf ball. So now if we move the chest the way we just showed there, those joints mm -hmm. moving up and away, yep. now you can basically feel like you actually let the golf club go and release it fairly I mean, I don't know what the word is, but you get it out. Get, get the energy out, which We're, is where we started with mm -hmm. distal. The golf club's designed on top. It goes under, it goes out. Yeah. Out meaning release it. Yeah. And good movers, meaning they can still rotate their chest through the strike. Mm -hmm. They get the energy out as early as they want. Mm -hmm. Okay, got okay. it. Yep. Yeah. So last thing with proximal is how this pelvis, pelvic system okay. works. 
the reason that we want the drop is so that I can turn this sternum away because there's two different ways to create the room needed. Okay. I can either extend in the hips and now this goes away. So this generally, I feel like I can at least release it, mm -hmm. right? If I drop and don't turn, I can't do that and that doesn't feel good. Yes. So the two different ways to get the sternum moving away is either to extend in the, in the spine. Okay. And if I keep extending the spine, it's gonna leak into my pelvis. Okay. Or I'm gonna rotate the pelvis early, which is trail hip extension, uh -huh. which leaks into, oh, now I've got space again and I can hit it. But again, we don't necessarily prefer that pattern because the bottom out gets wacky potentially and the face rotation is probably going to go up. Mm -hmm. So we like this drop. Now I'm dropping. So the sternum, is doing what I told it not to. It's getting closer, right? Okay, got it. But now I can curve it away, so I have the space all of a sudden. Got it. And so the you only can't way extend you can, and turn. The only way you can curve <laughs> it away is if you drop first, right? If you drop first. Okay, and the more you drop, the more you're able mm -hmm. to curve it away. Yep, exactly, we get that comment a lot too, is like, if you drop that much, aren't you, aren't you just gonna like run it into the ground? No, well, you can if you just fire the arms from here. So yes. that's an inappropriate matchup. Yes. Drop, fire the arms. Such a common question, common comment. Exactly. So instead, we want this, this rib system. Again, it's from the sternum. And we like the sternum because that's where the humerus attaches. And it's kind of a middle point mm -hmm. to see this spacing for the arms. Okay. Right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, if I drop and now I just turn the sternum up, back, and away this way. Oh, now I've got the room, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And you can shoot the energy out all day and it's gonna be an appropriate amount of like a way for the arms to release. Okay, so if they drop, they can't, they can't stop that process of turning. That's yep. where they'll run into the ground, Exactly. right? But as long as they swim out on mm -hmm. that up and away curve, yep. then you don't really run into that issue. That's exactly right. Okay. So we've talked about two of the three systems now talked about the club system, we've talked about the body system, mm -hmm. now we got this in-between system. In essence, we've talked about the distal system and the proximal system. Now we need the, I don't know what that word is, but the tweener. The tweener. Okay. <laughs> the tweener Bl system. Blends them together, is that where we're going with exactly. this? Exactly. Okay. So this is the arms, because if you understand the arms, and typically what's nice is if you understand the, the, the club system, like if it's up, then the arms are probably gonna like, in the backswing it's up, then the arms are probably gonna respond correctly. If it goes under, then chances are the arms will respond correctly. But just a general rule of thumb again is like how the humerus sits into the shoulder socket, how it swings freely is on a bit of an angle here. So like if you see runners run, they're running this way. Mm -hmm. They don't run this way no, they and don't. they don't run this way, right? Unless they're five years old, <laughs> like my two-year-old daughters. Okay, so when they run, it's here. So how this, this works, like this is called shoulder flexion. This is shoulder mm -hmm. extension. That's how the humerus swings really freely in its socket. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at the body as supporting the arms, if the body doesn't turn, in essence, the chest isn't turning, in the back swing, the lead humerus would swing up and you'll notice how generally speaking, it's working up from like a face on view in front of this trail shoulder. Do that with a club, because this freaks people out. Yep, <laughs> I know, it's freaky. That's the golf swing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Without chest rotation. Without chest rotation. Okay. So this would be back swing, yeah. away swing. This would be forward swing. Uh -huh. So if I do this here, yeah. people look at us like we're freaking crazy, right? Uh -huh. I went and got a golf lesson today. This is what I learned. Because this doesn't look anything like a golf swing, right? And again, in the backswing, the trail arm isn't in charge of lifting. We'll, we can talk about the nuts and bolts of what the hands and arm, all that stuff do later, but this is not this video. Yeah. Left arm lifts, right arm lifts. Backswing, finish. Right arm, if it's soft and the left arm lifts, that's the backswing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like it though, does it? No, it doesn't, not yet. Exactly, so you already alluded to it. What am I missing? Chest rotation. So if I rotate the chest, oh. All of a sudden that looks like a nice structure. Exactly, and if I do that together, so in essence the chest and this lead arm are working in harmony, oh, mm -hmm. club's on top. Yep. Now it can fall under, Yep. right? But from here, if I stop turning, the right arm would lift, and there's the finish. Oh. Chest rotation. Okay. So it's arm action, arm action. You practice this, you're teaching the arms how they swing. If I went 
chest, arms, chest, arms, or just arms, chest. Okay, cool. Arms, chest. Okay, cool. Whoop. Whoop. That's Man. a super basic way for people to understand. That's like, if you can understand that, you, you're on your way, right? Exactly. Like, and that's the, what do you call it? The tweener concept. That's what we're talking tweeners. about Tweeners. We're talking about the tweeners, the arms. <laughs> blending, blending some distal to some proximal. Exactly. Okay. And I think if you're going to understand like what we're looking for again, for like all players that we coach is they understand the entire global system. Mm -hmm. And you hear guys on tour talk about this and gals on tour talk about this where, you know, when they're hitting it really well, Someone goes, what are you thinking about? They don't really have a response. I think the way to articulate it is they're feeling their system. They feel the club, the arms and the body and how they interact with one another in sequence and in rhythm and they feel good. Yeah. I mean, the way I feel it is like, it feels like all of the components are in harmony. Exactly. Right? So not, there's not a single component that's working that you have to manipulate or like it just works for your system. 100%. And that's hard to describe to people. <laughs> but the, the way to earn that, right? Like the reason that you, TJ, have the ability to do that is because you're a badass freaking swinger of the club and you earned that right because you learned right. each individual piece of the system, how the lead arm swings, what the trail wrist does. So how as, the body works. as like a 15, 20 handicap who might be watching this, for instance, or even above, right? Yep. They're probably going to have some thoughts when they're training how to swing, sure. right? It's not like all those thoughts are going to go away. Like you hear a tour player talk mm -hmm. about it. You're going to have yep. to think of some, some technical concepts at first, of right? Of course, of course you have to, if you're going to learn, like if you're going to have an actual high quality golf swing, you just not birthed that right. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between talent and skill, Fair talent enough. you're birthed with right? Like, okay, if I'm seven feet tall, I might be able to dunk a little bit easier than somebody that's five, five, mm -hmm. the five, five guy can dunk though, because they acquire the skills needed. So mm -hmm. you can train all of those things in, which is beautiful. So you can earn any level of golf swing you want because of understanding skill. Mm -hmm. Well, the skill comes from hopefully what we're providing folks, is a better, deeper understanding or knowledge base that then they're able to work with so they can develop the skills easier, mm -hmm. right? right? So that's generally, again, the golf swing. Distal, proximal, tweener. Can you show that exercise one more time to like cap this off? Absolutely. Uh, which exercise are you alluding to? Arm swing, arm swing. Sure. And how they can <clears throat> kind of rotate the chest yep. along with that. So again, what's the rotator, the pelvis or the chest? Chest. Chest is the rotator. The pelvic system is the dropper. Again, different topic, but this is the rotator, folks. The arms lift. So in essence, we've got a Ferris wheel, mm -hmm. vertical plane. Okay, got it. Paired along with a uh, merry-go-round, horizontal plane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so if I can get both of them working together, Ferris wheel, merry-go-round, and do them together, boom. I generally speaking, I'm gonna have a fairly neutral backswing mm -hmm. and forward swing. And you could pair both of them. You could feel like I'm a right-handed player, obviously. So if I felt more like I'm hitting a left-handed shot here, mm -hmm. I could feel right arm swings up. So there's the Ferris wheel along with the merry-go-round. Well, that right there is through the strike. If I just kept turning the chest to, to make me pivot yeah. and then just, folded the arms. Oh, they're mirror images of each other. They're generally speaking mirror images. Generally speaking. That's a very good way to look at, it, especially for somebody that's newer to the game or looking to like better understand their, their system, their golf swing. Got it. Yep. So Sick. I think that's a pretty good way to just take a look at like just global perspective of golf swing. Mm -hmm. You got three systems. You got the club, the arm and hand system and the body system. Mm -hmm. And there's three different kind of phases in the golf swing as well. There's the backswing transition phase and through impact or the out the release phase. Mm -hmm. If you understand just what each system is supposed to be doing within those phases, you're going to have a pretty darn good opportunity to improve your golf swing. Word. I think that's great. Word. Questions? Write them out. We'd love to comment. It also gives us great opportunities to better understand where the holes in our explanations are so that we can fill those gaps with good knowledge and give you a better understanding of just general golf swing and how to improve your game. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you've made it this far, we wanna let you know about a little giveaway we're gonna be doing. 
Once we hit a thousand subscribers, which is happening very soon, we're gonna be giving away a free swing analysis. To enter to win, all you gotta do is like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're already subscribed, go ahead and like and leave us a comment. But that's how you can enter to win a free swing analysis from us. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next week.